In this video about the basics of Hearst cycles, I'm going to be speaking about the multiple cycles that influence the price movements of financial markets. It is one of the distinguishing features of Hearst's approach to financial markets that he identified multiple cycles that are influencing those price movements. There are in fact an infinite number of those cycles, but we don't have to worry about every single one of them. All that we need to understand is the ways in which these multiple cycles influence the price movements. The first thing that we're going to be speaking about is the concept of the nominal model. This comes from the principle of nominality, one of the basic principles that Hearst defined. That principle states that a specific nominal collection of harmonically related waves is common to all price movements, which tells us that there is a specific collection of cycles. They are not a totally arbitrary collection of cycles, but a specific collection of cycles. It also tells us that we can refer to the cycles by their names. That is the meaning of the word nominal, although there is some debate about the meaning of that word in that situation, but most analysts agree that it means that we can refer to the cycles by their names. This principle also tells us that the wavelengths of the cycles are mathematically related to one another. As a result of the principle of nominality, we can create what is called a cyclic model, which is very simply a list of cycles. Here is that list of cycles, the nominal model defined by Hearst 50 years ago. The top half of this list of cycles, the cycles with the greenish colored background, are the cycles discovered and identified by Hearst 50 years ago. The bottom half of this illustration with the orange background are cycles that have been discovered since he first published his nominal model. The important thing about this nominal model is that it provides us with a specific collection of cycles. Now where do these cycles come from? Did Hearst simply dream them up? Not at all. He performed extensive research. He performed a form of spectral analysis on the share prices of American stocks and identified the average wavelengths of cycles that were influencing those price movements. You will see there are three columns to this nominal model. The first column is simply the name of the cycle. The second column is the average wavelength of that cycle measured in days. And the third column is the average wavelength in a time frame relative to the wavelength of the cycle. You will see that the longest cycle that Hearst identified was an 18 year cycle with an average wavelength of 17.93 years. And the shortest cycle that he identified was a five day cycle with an average wavelength of 4.3 days. You will notice that the 80 day cycle, for instance, has an average wavelength of 68.2 days. Why do we call it the 80 day cycle then? Well, because Hearst decided that the shorter cycle being of a length of 4.3 days would be easier to refer to as very simply the five day cycle and the next longer cycle which has a mathematical relationship you will notice a ratio of two to one in terms of its wavelength would then be the 10 day cycle and the next longer cycle again with a mathematical relationship of two to one to the wavelength of the shorter cycle would be the 20 day cycle then the 40 day cycle the 80 day cycle and so forth we will be coming back to this nominal model several times in the videos ahead and speaking about that mathematical relationship. All that you need to understand for now is that each cycle in this nominal model is mathematically related to every other cycle. This nominal model is one of the first important concepts to understand as we explore the basics of Hearst cycles. In the next video, we will be exploring more detail about the ways in which these multiple cycles influence the price movements of financial markets.